Hey everybody, this is Perch. Um, you know the analogy that you, you shouldn't know how the magician does his tricks. Um, you want to know. You you kind of learn, you know, you, you're, you're, you're desperate to, how did they do that? How did that illusion take place? How did, you know, you know it's not actual magic, so how did the magician actually pull that off? And you want to know these things, and you you're curious, and then one day you find out. You know, somebody explains it to you, it's like, ah, oh, you know, the... The vanishing cabinet has a false front to it, and the person goes behind there. Or, hey, when they're sawing this lady in half, she's actually in an underground, you know, an under compartment there, and the legs are coming up, and that's how it's done. Or, you know, maybe maybe this uh, this rabbit actually died in the hatch, and he's waving around a corpse. I don't, who knows what what's actually going on? Um, but the challenge is once you know how the trick is done, once you know the secret to the magic then when you watch that trick again it's it's less good it's it's uh it it you know you don't have the same thrill you don't have the same excitement it seems a little more dull and you find yourself kind of moving on and in general when you find out how enough magic tricks are done then you kind of always have a pretty good sense of you know how that you, you just even if you don't know exactly how the trick's done you know a trick is being done and so you know you just kind of tune out and it, it takes your interest away. It's always like, don't, don't learn too much about a business or an industry. And where comics are concerned, it feels like there's a couple tricks that have been applied a lot over the last 15 years or so, and really a lot over the last five years. I mentioned elsewhere that, that one of the, the things that, that comes out most clearly, like a final conclusion to all of these sales videos, if you kind of wrap them all up, is that publishers have very little restraint if they find an idea that works, rather than save it, rather than be cautious about how frequently they, they go to the well with it, they will just keep keep doing it more and more and more and more. It's like there's this desperation of, you know, I, the, the trick's going to end at some point. People are going to get wise to this uh, soon. So try and shove as many, as many of these gimmicks out the window as you possibly can. You know, I, you go into the industry and you talk to people, uh, you talk to creators, you talk to publishers, you talk to everybody. And nobody is out there saying, hey, you know, 30 variant covers plus it's a great idea. This is this is a good idea and it's it's helpful to the industry and, you know, we, we need to shoot for 60 variant covers. Nobody's saying that. Everybody says the opposite, which is like, well, these things, it, there's too many. It's probably not healthy. It's probably going to cause another collapse. But, uh, you know, screw it. Eternals number one, 37 variant covers, go. That's, that's just how... It, it, people keep doing it, um, and and it's it's this almost fatalistic belief that you know it's all going to come apart at some point. So why not just you know put your foot down on the gas pedal and get us there as fast as we can? And and like the the magic trick, um, it feels like the audience, the the customers, the fans, uh, the people paying money for comics. So the customers, uh, they're getting increasingly wise to these tricks. The idea of, hey, it's a number one relaunch. You know, you're going to see some analysis coming up here. So actually, it may, it may hit before this video. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, so if, if you've already seen it, refer to that video. If it hasn't come out yet, the video is coming. See how this works? It's a choose-your-own-adventure. Um, the, the amount of number ones, when you have a company like Marvel, and a quarter or more of the books they publish are number one issues, and it's like collector's edition. You want to get on, you want to get on board of this. It's a number one. Nobody's falling for that anymore. People have figured out the trick. They've they've watched. They know how the lady gets sawed in half. They're not interested in in it again. And what's happening is there's there's yes, there's a law of diminishing returns. We're seeing sales fall faster. Um, people, you know, watch the Captain Marvel video talking about those numbers and kind of how it all charts. And you might say to yourself, well, that's Captain Marvel. Uh, it's also kind of the industry in general. Like, you can stack up the X-Men to that as well. And you see that with every progressive relaunch, because for a long time, the X-Men did not relaunch. It was, it was Bedrock. That title just kept going. And then at some point, you know, they relaunched it brand new number one, and then they relaunched again, and Kieran Gillen gets a relaunch, and then they do another relaunch, and then Bendis gets a relaunch, and it's like, pretty soon, you do, you do see the law of diminishing returns really set in. Not only does it go back to the low point it was at before you relaunched it, but it, it goes a little bit more. And it's because people are, are figuring out the trick. 
They, they, it, it's not, you know, the, the idea of this, Hey, it's a number one issue and it's going to be super cool and all the rest. It doesn't work. It, it no longer, you know, it, they've lost the credibility that this is an important milestone. This is an issue you need to buy in on. They've, they've lost it. They've, they've handed it away. And so in terms of, of a prediction, I think that what's going to happen is that the comic publishers, particularly the big two, although the big two are no longer, I mean, when I say the big two, of course, I'm talking about, uh, you know, Viz, Manga, and Scholastic, the big two, sorry. Uh, when I talk about Marvel and DC, I think there is a realization point coming, just like Marvel went through it in the early 2000s with the Ultimate line and kind of how they shuffle things around and, you know, they stopped trying to chase, uh, you know, artists entirely and, and tried to balance things out with writers. Of course, they went too far and they, they actually created the same problem for themselves with writers that they had with artists. But you're going to see a rebalancing. You're going to see uh, somebody come in and it's going to be like the profit that's going to come into the company and go, hey, if we want to make money, we're going to have to stop relying on variant covers and reboots and relaunches and number one issues and events with you know, 50 crossovers, we're going to, we're going to have to do it a different way. We're going to have to put out a story and a comic that people want to read. I do believe that moment's coming. Uh, I, and, and there's a lot of, of, you know, comments and, and hot takes out there. Like the comic industry is dead. It's never coming back. It's uh, history and numbers suggest it will come back, but it's going to come back very, very differently. It's going to come back having learned these lessons and repeated. And, and I think you will see the, the one strange thing is about comics, but in fairness, this happens in all kinds of industries. You get people who have been in the industry for 20, 30 years, and they've made all the mistakes. And yet the publishers are like, we need an industry veteran to come in here and uh, who really understands the business. And you might, you know, what you see in tech companies, you've heard about young disruptors. It's where the company or, or the startup or whoever it is goes, you know what? The people who, uh, the, the, the industry veterans, uh, they don't have anything new to tell us anymore. They actually uh, created a lot of these mistakes and they're going to pull, they're going to go into their bag of tricks and they're going to show us a bunch of magic tricks that we already know the answers to and are tired and stale. And maybe we shouldn't spend all this money on this industry veteran. Maybe... You know, bringing in, uh, you know, the, maybe Bob Harris, you know, for example, nothing wrong with Bob Harris, but maybe Bob Harris uh, shouldn't become editor in chief uh, of, of Image. And or, or you know, hey, let's, uh, you know, can you imagine like IDW taking the, the remaining dust of the money they have and going, you know, let's hire Bob Harris. And while we're at it, let's get a bunch of other people who have been in comics for like 30, 40 years and let's bring them in here and turn this company around. They're not going to turn this company. They're not going to turn a company around. They, they, their tricks are all spent. Uh, that I think that the comic industry is headed, as and again, this is not the the most daring, brave prediction. Although, if you have never taken a longer term, like 30, 40 year view of the industry, it may seem like it. About every fifteen to twenty years, the comic industry radically changes. There's 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 new people that come in. There's new executives that that rise to power, and there's a new status quo. And it's not always good. Sometimes it's, uh, you know, it, sometimes it leads to good things. Sometimes it leads to bad. More often than not, it leads to a little of both. But it's been about 15 years. It's been a little bit more than 15 years. It's been 18 years since the last giant change we had in the industry, which was around 2001 to 2003. A lot of things shifted. We're, we're about to get that again. It's, it's under it's all the writings on the wall. The big difference this time is that there are really strong power players right now in the form of manga, Scholastic, Random House, these other... There's other people driving the conversation. And those people are not really communicating with the, with the Marvels and the DC. There, there's not the spirit of cooperation that there kind of was in the past. There's not this sense that we need to rally around the direct market. There's, there's people who are very much out for their own ends. And both Marvel and DC being owned by, you know, Disney and AT&T, they have a little bit less freedom to just, you know, go chase and, and buddy up and, and other things. So they're kind of on their own. They got to figure this out. The problem is they're trying to figure it out right now with a bunch of people who, you know, who are not new thinkers. One of the most striking parts 
of uh, Marvel and DC, of more Marvel. I mean, DC, Daniel Cherry is a new, although I haven't been impressed with his marketing that he's done. Uh, Marie Javins, I think, is is an interesting one because I think she has a lot of good ideas, talks well, um, presents very well, but we haven't really, you know, it's, it's unclear how much say or authority she'll have. Um, but by and large, uh, the, you know, the, the big two are made up of, of kind of old timers. They're made up of people who have been in this industry for a long time, lived through it, and, you know, their magic tricks are done. They've, 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 they've done enough. And I'm, again, you gotta, you gotta expand the bubble to think about people like, like David Gabriel, like San Aminat, like some of these other, you know, in of some of these other faces. Um, it's not just the, the standard, you know, Oh, what's Tom Brevoort up to? What's, uh, you know, what's CB Sobolski up to? And, and it's, God, he's, it's gotta be killing him. He can't travel back to Japan right now with all the travel restrictions. Anyway, uh, it, it is, I think it is inevitable that the walls will break because what I don't believe is going to happen. And again, I'm, I'm saying this from the perspective of history and numbers and, and just knowing these companies and what they've done and, and th- their past, the evidence is in their past. Uh, I don't think comics are going to stop being printed. Um, I think that what we're instead, it's more likely, is that you see a massive regime change. And if you think about it, you know, Disney and AT and T both. Um, they, there's no, there's no long term loyalty. There's not, there's not anyone at Disney who's saying, you know what, we've really got to preserve. Joe Casada's job, or David Gabriel's job, or C.B. Smolsky's job, or Tom Brevoort's job, or even Sana Aminat's job. There's nobody at Disney that's like, you know, that, that that really is determined that that has to be part of the outcome. They're they're just going to be interested in having their business run the way they like it, uh, which, by the way, may not be the way we the customers like it. But regardless, uh, in the past, there was always some level of network, some level of protection. But in both companies right now, there's there's very little protection. We're watching Jeff Johns get slowly dismantled uh, over at DC. You know, Jim Lee is in this figurehead position. We have a bunch of new executives in there and a lot of screaming from the old executives who were ousted. But it, it, it's the, the protections are largely over. And and so anything can happen. It's it's we're we're truly facing kind of unknown times. We're heading into this this new cycle, this new 18 year, 20 year cycle with a lot of unknowns. The, uh, the, the momentum is, is definitely with people who are not the big two for the first time in, in like three of these changes. And on top of that, you know, the, the former incumbents, the Marvel and the DC, they're, they're playing with a completely different rule set by nature of their parents. So it, we are about to see some big, big changes. And I think the, the interesting thing to watch is that there's a lot of comic creators who, who really kind of want to cling on to the way things were. They, they really want just the world tomorrow to be like the world it was 10 years ago. That's, that's really what they want. They also have very little insight into what the big corporations are doing. They have zero insight into what's going on in manga or what's going on in uh, Scholastic or Random House. They just have no, no context over there. Maybe there's some people know a couple people over there, but it's, it's a very foreign ball game for them. And so you see, you're going to see this, this very strange resistance. Think what you saw already when DC did their layoffs and everything else. Think about the, the tweets and the outrage and, and kind of the, a lot of the, the uh, creators saying that, you know, Andy Curry was fired. And this is ridiculous. The company is over. It's, it's a complete disaster. It will never recover. Uh, a lot of these people are people who realize that change has come, that we're in the midst of it. And they really have no barometer to tell where it's going next. And that, that sets up very, very interesting times. I, I think we're, it's going to be fascinating to just kind of sit back and watch the next two to three years. Anyway, uh, what do you think about all this? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. Follow me on social media. Send me an email. Most importantly, as always, thanks for listening.